Okay. Section 1.2, we will talk about dimensions as well as units. Every engineering course talks about dimensions and units in the beginning because they are the most fundamental and essential elements in engineering. And this course is of no exceptions. There are two kinds of dimensions. Primary dimensions are those who are defined and agree in an international conference, while secondary dimensions are expressed in terms of the primary ones. Well, uh, we will use SR units in this handout as well as this course. Okay? For the English units, it is only of a supporting role and we will emphasize it in this course. Okay? There are seven primary dimensions, including with the corresponding SR units, length okay, in meter, mass in kg, time in second, temperature in kelvin, electric currents in ampere, amount of light in candela, as well as amount of matter in mole. Only the first four primary dimensions and the last one will be used frequently in this course. Okay? For others, for example, electric currents as well as amount of light, they are related to other topics, but not thermodynamics. So we will not talk about this in this course. Prefixes is SI are common in engineering applications. The list of prefixes can be found in this table, table one. As they are used in all branches in engineering, students should memorize them and learn them by heart. And in addition to the uh, prefixes listed here, there are also some uh, common prefixes that I haven't listed here. For example, 10 to the power 12, okay? That will be Terra, okay? Uh, we will use T to uh, represent the prefix. And uh, uh, another one is 10 to the power 12, okay? That is PECO. We will use P to denote this, okay? Please add it to this table by yourself. And uh, you can also notice that for the index of uh, inside this prefix, for example, uh, the 369 here, if it is greater than zero, then the prefixes will be in uh, capital letter. But if the index is negative, then it will be in small letter, okay? Some examples of commonly used dimensions are, and their SI units include the following. The first one is force, okay? That is Newton, okay? In terms of primary units, it will be kilogram times meter per second squared, okay? Well, the unit is derived by using Newton's second law, that is m equal to ma. M is the mass, while A is the acceleration, okay? And the second one is energy. Its SI unit is Joule, which is equal to Newton per meter. Or sometimes we also use kilojoule to uh, represent energy, because one joule is actually very small, okay? Well, in order to memorize this, we will also have the relationship of work you have learned in uh, elementary mechanics is that work equal to force times displacement, okay? Force is uh, Newton, while displacement would be meter, okay? The third one would be power, okay? The SI unit is watts, okay? It will be equal to joule per second, joule per unit second. And it is also from a relationship that you should have learned in elementary mechanics, that is power equal to energy divided by time. And after that, we will continue, okay? But uh, that's a reminder here. Beside the international system, there is also another system about dimensions and units, which is called the British or English system. But it will not be emphasized in this course, okay? Okay, and uh, there is a next subsection here that is called dimensional homogeneity. An engineer needs to ensure that the equation is dimensionally homogeneous or we call that dimensionally correct. That means two sides of the equation need to have the same unit, okay? But of course, dimensional homogeneity does not necessarily imply that the equation is correct, as it may differ by a multiplicative constant. However, once the units in both sides do not match, the equation must be wrong. Therefore, it is a good practice to check the accuracy of the derived equation by checking the units on both sides. 
Okay? Well, we can use the concepts of dimensional homogeneity to derive some of the equations. Okay? For example, I would like to find out the relation of drag force okay, with respect to other parameters. Here, we will use FD to denote this. Okay? Well, we know that drag force will be depend on the projector area A, that's the air row, as well as the velocity of air V. Okay? But considering the units of parameters, we can conclude this. Uh, that is, uh, FD is directly proportional to this one. Or we can express it by, by adding a multiplicative constant. But how? Okay? Let us uh, list out all of the units first. Okay? First of all, is FD is a force. So it is in Newton. So I would write FD square bracket. Square bracket means the dimension of. Okay? That means the dimension of uh, drag force will be equal to uh, Newton, okay? As uh, in the previous slide, we know that Newton is equal to kilogram times meter per second square. So we would rewrite it to be kilogram meter per second square, okay? For other parameters, we can also write them down. Okay, area is meter squared. Rho is the density. Density is the mass per unit volume. So it should be kilogram per meter cube. And we also have V. V is the velocity, so it will be equal to meter per second. Okay? So how can we know the following uh, relationship? Well, we consider the units, okay? Okay, we would write it as Fd equal to a to the power a rho to the power b, and v to the power c, okay? So I just compare the uh, dimensions of this relationship. We will use a, b, c to denote the index, okay? And if we compare the units on both sides, for example, we can see that for kilogram, Okay, because we know that uh, drag force will have a unit of kilogram here, and rho also have a kilogram with index 1. And for other parameters, uh, there isn't any kilogram. So, so we can quickly see that b should be equal to 1. Okay, how about other parameters? Well, we know that second appears here. Well, for a and rho, there is no any second involved in this units and only V have second. And we know that it is ms negative 1. So C should be 2. So that uh, the dimension would be uh, S to the power negative 2, which matches, matches the S negative 2 in the drag force. Okay. Finally, how about this small letter A? Well, uh, let us have some manipulation first. Okay. There's one unit we haven't uh, do any comparison, that's M, okay? So let us do some scratch work here. 1 should be equal to 2A, okay? And because the power of rho should be, uh, is 1, because B equal to 1, so that it should be, <coughs> it should be minus 3 times 1, okay? Minus negative 1 times 2, okay? So this negative 1 comes from this, and this 2 is equal to C, okay? And finally, you can solve to uh, obtain A equal to 1, okay? So that's finally, we, we can uh, have this relationship, that is A equal to 1, okay? So we finally have uh, derived this uh, relationship uh, here. This technique is called dimensional analysis, okay? It will be studied in greater detail in fluid mechanics, okay? It's actually not the general method in uh, dimensional analysis, okay? But uh, you will see that in more detail in fluid mechanics, okay? Okay, another part is about the unit conversion ratio. During actual computation, conversion of units is needed to calculate the answer in the suitable units. We know that because one kilogram is equal to 1,000 gram, and one kilowatt will be equal to 
a thousand joule per second. Okay, because uh, watts is equal to joule per second. So that we can express these two relationships in terms of unit conversion ratios. That is uh, this one. One kilogram divided by 1,000 gram equal to one. And uh, 1,000 joule divided by one kilowatt second equal to one. And uh, below would be an example showing the application of unit conversion ratios.